ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿಂದೂಯಿಸಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾನಲ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ಟುಡೆ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ ಹಿಂದೂಯಿಸಮ್ ಆರ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಏನ್ಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಯೋಗ ನ್ಯಾಯ ವೈಶೇಷಿಕ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಏನ್ಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ so now we are doing a deep dive into sanatana dharma from where it all started the different schools within sanatana dharma uh, what is the history of vedanta how it all or- originated so all of this we will be looking at in today's call and after that uh, we will also take q and a so first let us look at the source the source of everything is the vedas the source for whatever we are talking about today whether it's vedanta uh, whether what whatever we call hinduism sanatana dharma everything comes from vedas and these uh, vedas are called as shrutis shrutis are timeless in nature and shrutis are what has been heard so shrutis are not something that are composed or created by anyone but when an individual reaches the highest reaches his or her highest potential and he becomes open to the knowledge of the vedas it is said that these truths of the universe are revealed to him and a person can see this truth and hear this truth and hence they are shrutis so they are sounds of truth so it is not composed by anyone so the ancient rishis of india when they reached a certain level of uh, realization these truths became available to them and they simply passed it on to the next generation orally so this is how the system continued for thousands of years and the vedas were you know transmitted from one generation to another generation systematically and then comes smriti smriti is something that which has been remembered so it is not exactly like shrutis which are what has been heard but smritis are what has been remembered so bhagavad gita the gita upadesha of krishna to arjuna is an example of smriti and then there are something called as the puranas purana literally means old and puranas contain stories about gods and goddesses and different myth- mythology is covered under puranas and upanishads are part of vedas themselves so upanishads are not separate from vedas but upanishads are the end of the vedas in the sense they are the essence and the conclusion of the vedas in terms of the philosophical aspect and the nature of reality upanishads only deal with the nature of reality and then we need to talk about the guru shishya parampara whatever it is we are talking about here all of this has been given to us by an unbroken lineage it is said that from god himself or that from that infinite intelligence through a lineage of gurus for thousands and thousands of years this knowledge of vedas puranas of upanishads have been transmitted this is a brief context to what sanatana dharma is after this we need to look at the two schools the two broad categories within sanatana dharma at first we will briefly look at the heterodox schools and the main characteristic of these schools of thought is that they do not accept vedas to be the ultimate truth or they simply do not accept vedas the examples within the heterodox schools are buddhism jainism charvakas ajivikas and so on there are many schools like this buddhism as we all know uh, is based on the teachings of buddha buddha's main tenets that they are not especially concerned with the existence or non existence of god buddha considered that the world is full of misery and considered a man's duty is to seek liberation from the painful world so he criticized blind faith in the traditional scriptures like vedas but it is important to make a note here that at the time of buddha the upanishads and the vedantic 
teachings were totally ignored by the society they were indulged in animal sacrifices they were indulged in only the ritualistic aspect of the vedas which the buddha condemned at that time because the essence of the vedas the upanishads were ignored and uh, the society was indulged in different sorts of rituals and then uh, there is jainism the basic principle of uh, jainism is the idea that reality is perceived differently from different points of view and that no single point of view is completely true so those who have the infinite knowledge can know the true answer and that all others would know only a part of the answer jainism also did not accept vedas to be revelations and then there are charvakas charvakas are basically materialists and they are atheists they were skeptical and according to them there is no karma there is no dharma there is no other world hence death is the end of humans and pleasure is the ultimate object of life so drink eat do whatever you want ultimately it doesn't matter this is how many people even today live so this is one view this is almost the opposite of spirituality and then there were ajivikas and ajivikas believe that there is a cosmic force which ordered the affairs of the universe and determined all events and they believed that personal efforts were unable to change or accelerate improvement towards one spiritual destiny so basically they believed that everything is predetermined and there is nothing that we can do and even they uh, rejected god they rejected the vedas then there are many schools like this i have simply uh, noted down some important ones within the heterodox schools and then there are orthodox schools orthodox schools within sanatana dharma accepted vedas as revelations and to be true within orthodox schools there are there is sankhya yoga nyaya vaisheshika purva mimamsa and uttara mimamsa or vedanta sankhya was uh, you know propounded by kapila muni and sankhya is one of the oldest philosophical systems in the world in fact swami vivekananda called uh, kapila muni the most ancient philosopher in the world and the basic uh, teaching or the premise of sankhya is that there are two aspects to existence one is purusha that is self or consciousness and then there is prakriti uh, matter or the universe and they interact with each other and our goal is to detach from the material aspect and realize our nature as uh, pure consciousness but sankhya propagated that even prakriti exists infinitely separate from uh, brahman or consciousness so this is a this is the difference between sankhya and vedanta and then there is yoga yoga is popular nowadays across the world uh, the main proponent or the main teacher who systemized yoga was patanjali yoga literally means union of the two principal entities and yoga consists of an elaborate system the ashtanga yoga has a as an elaborate system of asana asana pranayama pratyahara etc basically to reach the ultimate state of samadhi and then there is nyaya nyaya is logic nyaya states that nothing is acceptable until and unless it is in accordance with the reason and experience so everything has to be logically understood as per this philosophy and within nyaya sutras there are four means of attaining valid knowledge there is perception inference comparison and verbal testimony so we will not go into detail with regards to each of these philosophies but we are looking at them from the surface to understand the overall uh framework and overall schools of thought within sanatana dharma and then there is vaisheshika which is similar to nyaya in terms of uh, their frameworks and thought but kanada and kanada sutras are the main uh you know principal teaching with respect to vaisheshika philosophy the basis of this philosophy is that all objects in physical universe are reducible to a finite number of atoms and brahman is regarded as the fundamental force that causes consciousness in these atoms so the atomic structure was discussed thousands and thousands of years ago in the kanada sutras and then comes purva mimamsa 
Jamini is associated with this school of Sanatana Dharma and this philosophy encompasses the Nyaya Vaisheshika systems and it emphasizes the concepts of valid knowledge. According to Purva Mimamsa, Vedas are eternal and possesses all knowledge. So this is the, they focus on the ritualistic aspect of the Vedas. Whereas the Uttara Mimamsa or Vedanta, they focus on the philosophical teachings of the Upanishads and the Vedas. So our interest lies in Vedanta. So to come here, we discussed the entire progression and history of uh, what all happened within Sanatana Dharma. Within Vedanta, again, there are different schools based on their own interpretations of the Upanishads. As you all know, we follow Advaita Vedanta. The main proponent of Advaita Vedanta was Adiguru Shankaracharya. Then there is Dvaita and the main proponent for Dvaita was Madhvacharya. And then there is Vishishta Dvaita uh, of Sri Ramanujacharya. Then there is Shuddha Dvaita and so on. There are different schools based on different interpretations of the Upanishads. But as you will discover and as you will understand through this call and through our programs, how Advaita Vedanta gives a holistic understanding of reality and a holistic and the most clear and direct interpretation of the Upanishads. And Adiguru Shankaracharya in his time, which was around 8th century, there is some debate with regards to this timing. But at this time, the entire Sanatana Dharma, the system was broken and uh, the Buddhism, their uh, Buddhism and different other religions had taken over the entire uh, landscape of India. And then whatever remained of Sanatana Dharma, where mainly they mainly focused on the ritualistic aspect of the Vedas, uh, which are called Karma Karmakanda. But then Shankaracharya came, he re-established and revived the Sanatana Dharma. He composed innumerable number of works. His main works are Bhashyas, which are basically commentaries on the Brahma Sutras, on the 10 main Upanishads, on uh, Lalita Trishati, etc. And then there are Prakarana Granthas, which are very important texts that he composed, which explains to us the nature of reality. Viveka Chudamani, Aparoksha Nubhuti, uh, Atma Bodha, Tattva Bodha, all of the things that we study are the creations of Shankaracharya. Then he also created many, many hymns and devotional works. The Ganesha Bujangam, Sri Ganesha Pancharatnam. So, uh, Saundarya Lahari, many, many works. There is some debate as in what all works he composed and what all works he has not uh, in terms of when it comes to his devotional work. But then he has composed a lot of works in terms of hymns and meditations or devotional works or in terms of Prakarana Granthas, which are basically texts which explain to us the nature of reality. Apart from this, his main works were the commentaries that he gave, the explanations that he gave to the Upanishads, which made it clear in terms of what these Upanishads were talking about. So this is about Shankaracharya. And then Vedanta, right? Let us discuss a little bit more about Vedanta today. So within Vedanta, we are studying Advaita Vedanta, which is which we call Vedanta itself, uh, the most direct and the clear interpretation of the Upanishads. And the foundational texts for Vedanta are called Prasthanatrayi. These three texts of Upanishads, Brahma Sutras and Bhagavad Gita are the foundational texts for a student of Vedanta. And the foundational concepts within Vedanta are Brahman, Atman, Karma, Dharma, Samsara, Dukkha, Jnana and Moksha. So, Brahman is the universal consciousness, the infinite consciousness, uh, the ultimate reality, God, universal intelligence, whatever we, whatever we call it. And then Atman is the self and the primary tenet of Advaita Vedanta is that Atman is Brahman. The self is universal consciousness because the universal consciousness or the infinite consciousness is all there is according to Vedanta. And then Karma is about cause and effect. It is action and memory. Dharma is about sustainability or truth. And samsara is about the world and birth and death, the cycle of birth and death. And dukkha is suffering. Jnana is knowledge. 
transcendental knowledge here and moksha is enlightenment these are some foundational concepts that one needs to know and understand when it comes to advaita vedanta or vedanta in general essence of vedanta tells us that the self is infinite and everything is one at the fundamental level so the infinitude of self and oneness in all is the essence of advaita vedanta and the goal with everything is enlightenment so absolute cessation of suffering and attainment of absolute bliss these are the two indicators of an enlightened being and this is the goal for everyone because everyone seeks absolute cessation of suffering and attainment of absolute bliss this is the entire structure that we need to understand to understand what sanatana dharma actually is and it started from sankhya and it came till vedanta and there are again different heterodox schools like buddhism jainism etc uh, who didn't accept vedas but still they are a part of sanatana dharma in the sense they all come under one ecosystem of sanatana dharma they all come under one umbrella and swami vivekananda also said that these different schools of thought are progressive in nature in the sense advaita vedanta is the ultimate realization that an individual can have and this the system and these um, schools of thought this knowledge was transmitted from one generation to another generation through the lineage of guru parampara but this system was disturbed and you know it was attacked during a certain period in india uh, due to colonization and uh, islamic invasions etc but even though this was uh, disturbed and this was attacked still the essence of it remains and because of which we still have this knowledge and wisdom uh and this is still going on and this is this knowledge is enlightening the world subscribe to advaita to wake up shivoham